Hi, and welcome to our CSA Digital Email Summit. And our session for today is how to use Breamy as a brand from the idea to go live. My name is Maike, and I'm responsible for the marketing at the Certified Senders Alliance. I want to give you a brief overview of the Certified Senders Alliance. Maybe you don't know us. We have been in the market now over 15 years, and we're working together with mailbox providers and technology partners. We have more than 100 certified senders. Our goal is to increase the quality of commercial emailing. We don't do this alone. We do this in cooperation with our partners. We want to bring the different parties in the email marketing together so that we have the CSA email summit since six years now. Of course, this year only digital. I know we had a, we have a lot of participants who joined the last webinars, but the housekeeping rules for today. Please note that you're muted during the whole webinar. So if you have any questions, you can submit them to the organizer. It's me today. I will collect all the questions and read them out loud at the end of the session. As I mentioned before, the session for today is how to use Beamy as a brand. And our speaker for today is Romina. She's a marketing manager at the Wit Gruppe, as well as Peter. He is the email marketing department chair. So it will feel a lot of fun, a lot of new knowledge. And you will hear me at the end of the session again um, when I read the questions out loud. So I'm glad I can hand over to Peter now. And um, yeah, see you soon. So before we start, just a little introduction. Today, we want to show you a little bit about how we as a brand in the big group uh, got to know BIMI, uh, how we uh, managed to convince our stakeholders in the house to join the let's say BIMI project, uh, what were the, uh, the complications, the problems, the issues. And yeah, the complete story from, from how we get to know why did we implement it and yeah, what are our next steps on this BIMI project are to, let's say, yeah, so that we know we, uh, which, uh, which road we, we need to follow on this, on this uh, BIMI, let's say, rollout to complete our complete project. First of all, before I start, just a little uh, information beforehand. Uh, it could look like that we are ignoring some COVID rules. We are not because we are next to each other. But as you can see here, it's a solid wall between us. So we are next to each other without being next to each other. And so uh, before we start into the, in the topic itself, let's start to introduce ourselves. So I hand over to, to Romina first. Hello everyone, um, my name is Romina. I'm working in P2's team um, since three years now. Um, I'm an email marketing manager. So the most of the time I do email marketing things like creating campaigns, sending these campaigns, analyze and so on. But uh, there's another big part in my um, daily business and that's deliverability and email security. And that's very untypical for me because I'm usually very creative, I'm not that technical. And uh, two years ago, I can't imagine that um, this will be so present in my work life and I'll be uh, such a security fan. <laughs> and yes, um, one day Peter asked his team, all my colleagues and me, um, who wants to do this security stuff? And we are all marketing people. And as you can imagine, everybody said, oh, great idea, but not with me. And that was my chance. So um, this topic was very strange for me. I really didn't know nothing. And um, Peter showed me a lot. He learned me a lot. And our first project we did together was the implementation of BIMI. That's the reason why I'm here today. Yeah, and uh, if, to, just to say about me, I'm Peter. I'm the head of the email marketing department here at Bitgroup now for almost five years. In the email marketing business, I'm uh, all around about nine years. I started my career in the customer care service of Experian, so the basic uh, call center stuff like resetting passwords and, and starting campaigns and such stuff. And uh, during all my, in my whole career, I, I, I recognized that the deliverability topic and all the security and the and all the stuff about this topic is uh, let's, it's, it's my USP. It's it's what I'm focused on and what what uh, what my uh, special skill is for uh, to to call it this way. And and yeah, when I when I uh, joined the the brand side uh, before joining the brand side, I was on agency side. Now I'm on on brand side, and I can take a look at this topic now from a completely different perspective. And 
Now, before we start into getting into the into the detailed stuff, uh, it's time to uh, uh, to show you a little bit uh, where we are working, so that you know uh, what uh, we are at the brand are, or what our brand uh, USPs are. So, Ronki, there we are. Um, so that's my part again. Um, we are working for the Witt Gruppe. We are a multi-channel company and a member of the Otto Group. Um, we're selling fashion for women. We have 10 brands in 10 different countries and all together about 18 online shops. They are all managed here in Weiden, a little town in Bavaria in Germany. Um, yes, and we're very international. Um, we, uh, we have a main market in Germany, of course, but we also have a lot of European countries and also in the USA, for example. Um, our brands are focusing on different target groups. Um, we have a segment with a very low price. We have a very high price segment, also a segment which is focusing on the quality. And um, they, these brands, they have all one thing together. Peter, you can switch. <laughs> um, and that's the women with an um, age of 50 and more. Some brands are much older, about 18, about 17, but um, most of them are 50 and older. And uh, we want to encourage these women in their affirmation of life. We want to give them more self-confidence. We simply want them to have their best time of their lives. They should not care about the gray hair and in, in the gray hair or the lines in their face. Um, they just should feel pretty um, in our clothes, the best way. <laughs> And yes, uh, we, I hope you agree. Um, these women are fantastic, but you can see, yeah. um, they sometimes are a little, a little bit careless when it comes to emails and the dangerous internet activity out there. Um, they can't really make a difference between a phishing mail or a good mail. And if you showed your grandmother or your mother some technical thing, I think you know what I mean. It's hard to teach them how they can protect themselves. So we searched for a way how we can protect our customers the best way. And um, before I gave the word to Peter now, um, I want to mention that um, with FIMI and the required demonic sex things, um, you can also uh, protect your employees from phishing because um, it's, it can be implemented on your company domain, of course, uh, not just on your online shops or on your newsletter domains, also on your company domains. And we have all these employees in our companies who are likely to click any dangerous links. And the best way to protect them is that they don't get these links. Um, yeah, so have that in your mind. That's that's also very important. Yeah, and basically, when everybody's listening now and says, "Hey, protect against phishing," "Hey, protecting customers and protecting employees," and so on, but to get to that way and to achieving that target, it's a really, really long way. And the long way we started with Bimi, or when we uh, first get got to know Bimi, it was as a CSA summit. It was uh, it was uh, like four or five years ago, around about, and it was uh, yeah the first impression of Vimy uh, I personally received by 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 the magical Terry Link. I don't know who of this uh, of the crowd listening ever has seen Terry on on the stage and presenting his uh, his uh, Terry style. I would call it. It was just uh, magnificent. It was great, and it was very inspiring. And what 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 catch what caught me and what what he was explaining what sound sounded very special to me back back then was that it was a collaboration of Google Microsoft Yahoo and many many more uh, were starting this BIMI project together companies which you normally think are working against each other which are usually uh, challenging each other and he was talking about something like the BIMI project where all these companies which are usually here yeah, challenging each other are teaming up with with just one idea, with just one target, with just one target was just reduce spamming and uh, and improve branding in in one and the same move. So it was it was very impressing. And when I sat in the in in, in this uh, in this in his presentation, I just said, hey, I want to do it. I want to make it. I want to support it. It just sounds great. And uh, and uh, for me and for 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 the target, it was just hey, 
it sounded so easy. It sounded like it does not cost uh, thousands of euros. It doesn't cost uh, hours and days and years of working. It's it's basically uh, Bimi is basically uh, let's say it's 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 like a it's like a goodie if you do your housekeeping, if you take care of your SPF, your DKIM, your DMAX setting, if you can configure it properly, if you take your time and sort uh, sort out your your domain responsibility. So. If, you should do all the stuff you should or also do you should do anyway so so bimmy is like a, a cherry on the, on a cake if so if you do your homework then you can uh, have this branding on top and and that was what impressed me and what i said hey uh, <laughs> because back then i was on agency side and the first thing i said was hey i want to convince my clients to use it well i wanted i tried i con i contacted my clients but well, the feedback was always the same. No one was interested because, yeah, it's simply not a sexy topic to talk about SPF, DKIM, DMARC, domain settings, and so stuff. Because, yeah, the usual question is uh, how many how many uh, revenue do I get through it? And yeah, and uh, that was the main question you cannot answer with. Okay, if you install Bimi, you get uh, XK uh, more than revenue. That's not the case. It's housekeeping. And it's uh, yeah, it's a mandatory thing. We all should uh, should uh, should long for to to protect our employees and customers for, from phishing. And and the branding is a bonus uh, on top, but but a great bonus. So when I joined the, the brand side as a head of email marketing, for me it was very clear that hey, okay, now I'm in the driver's seat, and now we can try to push this standard. We can uh, we can implement it on our side, on our brand side, and well, uh, then I got back to reality, and uh, that was uh, uh, the first thing I had to learn is uh, if you try it alone, you will fail. So if you are in the email marketing department and you say, hey, I want to implement Bimmy, let's start, let's configure something, and hey, we will be live in a week or something like this, you will fail. You cannot start on your own. It's not an email marketing topic. I wish it would be, I wish it would be this easy, but it's not. If you do it alone, simply you will fail. You need some persons which are listed here. You need an IT security officer. That's the person usually should should bring on board very, very soon because that is the guy that if you say, hey, I want to make our company safer, he's the first to say, okay, I'm with you. So that's very important to put him on board. Same domain administrator. It's very important to put these guys into the team and say, hey, we need your help. Well. If they are not interested in this topic and they do not support you or they say, hey, it's not important or I have a lot of different other tickets to do, it's you will fail. You need them. You need somebody to push the button, somebody to, to, to amend the domain settings. You really, really need them to have, uh, let's say, an operational success in rolling out BIMI and stuff. And of course, if you are implementing something and if you need resources and stuff, what's very important is that the CEO is on your team. So that's very important because uh, you might need a tool, you might need resources in the IT department or in the IT security officer, you might even need time to train uh, persons in the email marketing team. So when I, for example, uh, um, had some trainings with Romina and we trained and we, we, we learned and we made practices and so stuff, that takes time. You can't do it if not the complete management or CEO said, okay, that's an important project and we will go that way. And the last, uh, uh, the last team member you need is your ESP, because your ESP, it's very important that there are guys on the other end uh, that support you, that know what you're doing. Then if you say, hey, I want to implement BIMI, please help you. They are not asking you, you want to implement what? What is BIMI and where does she live? No, it's very important that you have an ESP who knows what you're talking about, who knows uh, why deliverability is such an important uh, uh, topic and they assist you with with all the housekeeping they assist you for also amending some some entries assess, assist you with monitoring and they even assist you with contacting uh, isps because there will be some uh, some settings some errors some kind of and, and even if you're at, at, the, at the moment where all is configured correctly it could be that you that, that there are some other issues where you where you need help of your of your ESP. For us personally, 
we had one, uh, let's say, it's like a key moment, how we made uh, the complete, let's say, convince, how we managed to convince our complete company and our CEO even though, and that's, yeah, it was, uh, it was fishing. So when, when we started and it was very hard to, let's say, show how important the impact is of such a project to, let's say, arrange new all domains and housekeeping and the whole domain setup, registry, admins, you need all this type of persons. We said, hey, man, the, the, the most important key to success is to show how dangerous it is to not do anything. And what, what we did is we, we spoofed our CAO live. So we had a Beamer presentation with a post box on the screen. We put some, let's say, pushed some, so some, some darker buttons in some darker websites. And hey, we spoofed the CEO live and in, in color on the, on the Beamer. And then he saw how important this is. And then it took only yeah, seconds to get the priority on this topic. And we managed to, to get all the resources and all the approval to uh, implement and follow up for this topic. So it is a, let's say, not a usual, not very usual uh, kind of uh, action, but it helped. It helped to get priority on this topic because you know you need all the persons I just mentioned. And uh, a very important thing is that you take your time. You have a cross-functional team, you have, a, you have a domain admin, you have email marketing, all the persons I mentioned before. And to get everyone, uh, uh, to get everyone on board for the same targets, the same processes, and to start the whole cleanup process for setting up DMARC, DIMI, and, uh, and, and BKIM, SPFs, and all this stuff, you need to make a plan. You need your time. You need... Uh, Sometimes if you're even if you have company, you have not one, two, three, or four domains, you have hundreds of domains. And every domain takes time to configure. That's very important that you don't uh, that you don't hurry so that you take the time you need. And uh, it's also very important that you clarify responsibilities in this process. So who is the one who is amending the settings? Who is the one who is monitoring? And who is the one who maybe needs to approve some budget if you need a monitoring tool or something like this? And that is a very important uh, hint we can give you is get a monitoring tool. Yes, you can try it on your own. Yes, you can be brave and say, hey, I have all the 350 domains all in my domain admin uh, overview tool. That's a fine idea, but promise, I promise you, you will fail. Later, when your house is cleaned up and you get maybe into a process where all is cleaned up and all is set up and all the SPFs, records and stuff, stuff is well done. Maybe you can, uh, you can skip this process, but once you start the cleanup, you need a tool. If not, well, you will fail. Sorry. So, and one, one day when we reached the point, it was, uh, was uh, some months ago when we had all our house clean and all our records for all our hundreds of domains were perfectly. And we convinced everyone, all processes were, were perfect, uh, the budget was clear, the, the, the domain admins and, 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 the, and the CEO and, the, and also the, uh, the, the, the ESO, ICT, Internet Security Manager, all were on the same page and also it was fine and now we are finished. No, we are not. You will be never finished with this kind of project. It's an ongoing process and you have to keep your house clean. If not, then you have to start over three months ago, uh, three months later, and then you will end up with the same mess again. It's like an it, it, it's like a, an ethic or something like this. If you don't clean it up and keep it clean, and if you start to put new things in it, like new domain registering or or type of domains you are you're buying and registering, you will uh, you will really end up in a mess if you don't keep constantly keeping your house clean and constantly monitoring all those processes, monitoring your records, monitoring your settings, and just monitoring all the technical stuff and also amending it. And even more uh, than the technical part of monitoring and, and keeping your house clean is to share the knowledge. It's very important that the knowledge of this uh, whole uh, domain setup, the, the security, DME, DMARC stuff, that this knowledge is not only, uh, let's say, put on one, two, three, or four persons. So it's very important that in the whole company, this knowledge is spread so that you don't not get into the danger if one is sick or leaving the company. So 
So it has to be, let's say, uh, find its place in the in the DNA of your company that security is important, domain seeding is important, that you set up your processes and share the knowledge to new employees, even in it don't, doesn't matter if you're in the IT admin team or email marketing or in the or in the security team. You need to share this and you need to keep it constantly clean and also constantly share this knowledge about this project. And I know that a lot of people now want to know how the technical implementation was in detail, but that will be just a little teaser. That will be more of a topic on Thursday this week. So uh, in this next webinar, we will. Florian, uh, Fierke, and, and myself will then more go into the technical details, so how we in detail amended the settings and so stuff. But that is just one part. The other part is just what I told you about, that's, that you have to uh, make this cross-functional teams. You have to take care of what the whole uh, workload will be. And it's not uh, just a click a button and we're finished topic. Well, one person, yeah. That's me. Um, so let's talk about the successes we celebrate. Um, the first thing, and I think the most important thing, is that our cyber attacks are reduced. Um, before we've implemented BIMI and also DMOC, of course, um, we had about 30,000 phishing mails sometimes a day, um, which is a very high volume for us. Um, today we have about 10 to 50 in one month. Um, so that's a very low. Um, volume and we're ha very happy about that. What's the reason for that? Um, if you have implemented DMARC, all the cyber criminals out there getting notifications, for example, if they use your domain and they are not um, authenticated for it. And um, so they can see you are a safe company and they see there's nothing to get for them and they will put their effort into profitable ones uh, in companies that are not as safe as you. And um, it's always good to be not the first person on the attractivity list from cybercrime um, because they're getting better and better. And um, if you are a safe company, they will not attack you at first. Um, the second thing I want to mention is that our deliverability is flawless. We're landing in the inbox most of the time, 100%. Um, we have incredible open rates. Again, what's the reason for that? Um, we have implemented DMARC, um, but we've also implemented BIMI. Um, if there is an email provider which is supporting BIMI, you will automatically be in the inbox. Of course, it's not a free card to do stupid things. You have to be a good sender, you have to do your homework, you have to be good, and then um, you will have no problems with the junk mail folder. Unfortunately, today um, BIMI is just available for Yahoo. Um, and we hope there will be um, a lot of email providers who will follow. Um, but all the other email providers see that you are a safe sender, you are getting the focus on your um, email security, and they will appreciate that. So um, if you want a good reputation, have a look on your, um, on your, secur to, uh, on your secu security settings, and you will have no problems. Um, I think every email marketing manager out there will feel with me when I say spam is scary. So we hate spam, we don't want spam, and we are happy if it's not um, there. So do your homework, be safe, and you won't have any problems. Um, and the third thing is also for marketing people interesting. Um, it's uh, that you can create with Bimmy more brand awareness. Um, as you can see on the screenshots, um, you can see the brand logo in the inbox. It's of course very eye-catching. And we did a little study and the results were that um, our customers see us as more trustworthy, as more safer, and they um, are more likely to open our newsletters and buy at the end. And that's what we want them to do, of course, buy our clothes. <laughs> and uh, yes, we are very happy with that. So all together, you can see BIMI and also DMOC, of course, um, are, have just positive impacts on your attractivity for cybercrime, on your deliverability, and also on your um, brand awareness. The question is, what are you waiting for? And on, on, on our side, we are almost finished. 
So we are finished with uh, our VIT group grant, but the second or follow-up project will be to roll it out to Heine.de. Uh, Heine is a company which is now, now uh, merging into the VIT group. So uh, it will be our next task to also roll out, uh, make a Vimy rollout for them. So also including SPF, DMAC, DKIM and the whole standard stuff. So we all at, at the VIT group are completely on the, on the same standards. So uh, Heine can also profit from the things which uh, just Romina mentioned. And it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very important that, uh, that we share the knowledge, that we share the knowledge within the company, uh, share it with our different location now at the Heine office in Karlsruhe, and uh, also share it uh, or keep sharing it uh, within the IT and, and also all the, uh, the, the commercial teams so that they know that's very important to keep this standard and keep to our, our house clean and do our homework and, and take care of this, this domain security and deliverability stuff. And, and the good thing is, and, and, and showing us that we are on the correct way is that we now get, uh, got, got, an, uh, got, an, uh, got, got asked from the Otto Group to, uh, to create some uh, Otto Group uh, wide standards so that the complete Otto Group will follow the same uh, domain and deliverability standards. And uh, we're in the process now of creating these standards. And this will lead to the complete auto group uh, to be uh, to be uh, on the on the domain standards and security standards which we're longing for. And what we can recommend is that uh, that uh, every one of you out there, it doesn't matter if you're an ESP, PSP, if you're an ISP, if you're on brand, or if you're a technician programming stuff, it's very important to take care of your of your domain stuff. And uh, it's very important that you do so, because if you don't do it, Bimi will die and uh, all the spammers will win this fight. And uh, we have to do this fight together and we have to kick their asses to be true. And that's, uh, we can just make it if you all work together. So more ISPs uh, should support Bimi and, uh, and uh, let's say, uh, hand it out as a little goodie for, for keeping your house clean, all the settings are up to date and so stuff. And uh, I just can hope that uh, there will be more following us because it's not it's it's not that big uh, invest in time and not that big financial uh, in, invest you have to do. It's all a little bit of house cleaning and doing your homework and putting the right persons on a disc to dis to discuss with each other and to finding a way to uh, to make this world a little bit safer and. And I really hope that after this session, uh, one or two of you will, will think, hey, maybe we should push this, uh, this topic internally and how can we push it technically and we'll join on Thursday. But basically, uh, if we don't manage to make ISPs, ESP, and even you join us. We will lose this fight versus the spammer. So let's kick their asses together. And what are you waiting for? Romina said it, just go ahead and clean your stuff. So and now, we are finished with our presentation and I would really love uh, to hear your questions uh, or we would love to hear your questions and try to help you uh, on your way to better security settings and of course better deliverability. So go ahead. Hi, it's me again. <laughs> so thank you, first of all. Um, so far we have two questions that go in the same direction. Um, I will read them out loud now. How do you come to the conclusion that implementing BIMI gives you a better inbox placement? The next question uh, was the same as I mentioned. Um, yeah. Well, uh, should I? Okay. So it's it's basically we had a we had a study on this. We, we are using not only BIMI for for inbox placement. We also use. Uh, we, we also have countries where, uh, where we have trusted dialogue and so stuff. And there were a lot of, a, a lot of, uh, of research and a lot of studies which were making A-B tests and stuff like this and just checking, is it better uh, open rates? Is it better uh, click rates and stuff? Yes or no? And, and we also made, uh, when in the process, when rolling out BIMI and, and trusted dialogue back times, we had some countries, like example, we have two brands in Austria and two brands in Switzerland. We made like a kind of A-B testing and said, hey, did the rates improve or not? And they did. They did, of course. And the client recognized it and the client, uh, uh, the client showed us that we are more trustworthy and that he knows what we are doing is good. And 
and just make a little conclusion after all. So if we just look back at the last year and the countries where we had dimming implemented, the the number of uh, the number of deliverability issues is of course reduced. It's not because just of dimming. It's because you have to uh, do your homework beforehand. Because if you have properly set up SPF, DKIM, and DMARC, then that, of course, itself is an improvement in deliverability. BIMI is, like I said, the cherry on the cake. It's, uh, it's, it's the bonus within. But we can confirm in the open rates and click rates, it will improve your deliverability and your open rates. OK. Um, we got more questions. Um, will the BIMI logo always show when it properly implemented? Probably. Yeah, so it will. It will, but currently we can just uh, test it for, for Yahoo. Uh, we know it might be online also for our AOL, but we, yeah, we have almost non-subscribers uh, non, uh, non with AOL. But with, with Yahoo, it, it works very good. And of course, in the starting phase, one year ago, we had to, let's say, amend some things like, uh, like a picture requirements and so on. So we had our, our learning, uh, learning curve, for example. But once it was all set up and all was fine, and of course, your overall reputation is good, then it worked all everything perfectly. Uh, but you have to keep an eye on it. That's very important. Uh, if you have a ruined, uh, uh, overall, uh, ruined overall reputation, BIMI won't help you. So of course you have to stick to the basic rules, keep your uh, list uh, clean, uh, list hygiene uh, has to be an important topic. So, so if this is all done, you just have to put your logo uh, live and then it goes and then it's live. So for on our side, it was, uh, it was uh, running really smoothly. Um, okay, the next one. How do you see the effect of using S MIME certificates to sign and secure marketing campaign messages? Is there an impact on deliverability? Could you please repeat the start of the question? It was a little bit. Um, how do you see the effect of using S MIME certificates to sign and secure marketing campaign messages? I'm not quite sure what kind of certificates. Uh... Uh, but if you are as is uh, TSL certificates or something like this, then I don't have any studies or something like this to compare it if it's improved or not. For us, it's a standard. It's set everywhere. It's not that big deal to implement it, and it's working. But uh, to be to be honest, we never have the idea to uh, to turn it off and, <laughs> and and check if if something is going worse or something like this. So these certificate stuff is uh, it's it's a given thing. It's very uh, just standard to have it on active okay is it best to be an early adopter with this kind of new tech as we expect other providers to follow hmm. that's a good question <laughs> do you want to say um i hope i understood it right but um if you implement bimi now and for example i just said gmail will follow um you won't have any Thing to do. Um, Chimo will recognize BIMI automatically and um, you can lean back and watch. So I think that's the answer. Yeah, and, and, and the good thing is, just to, to add a little bit, is uh, it's always a good thing uh, uh, to start uh, to be the first to be more secure and, 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 and to, let's say, uh, be the first to clean up. Of course, you can say, hey, why should I be the first one to clean my house? But uh, uh, does it really care if others are not cleaning their house? No, it's not because uh, implementing BIMI is, is all about making your, your house clean. And of course you should start it now. If you haven't done it, well, it's, it's already a fault. So you should, you should start now because there is absolutely no advantage in doing nothing. Okay, and the next one. What about DMARC policy, quarantine and broken email forwarding? If we enable quarantine or reject policy, then all email forwarding to, for users will be broken. Yes, yeah, so, um, so far uh, we knew about this topic and we, and we, we needed to decide uh, if we put it on quarantine or not, or if we have, let's say, the risk of forwarders being uh, uh, causing issues. But for us, it's uh, it's it's not not a problem at all. If we let's say, for example, you have uh, you have a, a volume of 20 million mails, we are talking about three or four 
forwarders. So that is a percentage which is really not a big deal for us. So if you put it on 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 a side and calculate if 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 it's an advantage or disadvantage to put it on a let's say stricter rule or not, for us the answer was clear: go for quarantine, go for reject, and whoever is is forwarding a newsletter and that are just really really a small share of our of of, of our daily business. They, well, we, we have to live with it. That's it. And uh, for us, it's not a big deal. We are really talking about a really, really small amount of, of persons. And the good thing is, and the really good thing is, you, with DMARC activated, you can you can monitor this. You can see how, bi how big this deal is. You can see, hey, do I have a brand or do I have a, a business model where there is a lot forwarding or not? If you are not, if you are not having DMARC Live, you will never know. So even with this question, you need to have DMARC Live to just know what's going on with your domain and know what's going on with your, uh, with your emails. But for us personally, there was no question to say, hey, do we go the forwarders first uh, uh, way or not? Okay, um, the next one. Will the BIMI guideline criteria change for other providers? What do you think? What do we think? <laughs> <laughs> I would say even even if they do, that would be a pity because uh, I think the whole magic of this whole process, BIMI, was that there were a lot of providers working together, creating one standard, everybody sticking to it. And I think if they change, they should change it all together. That we as a brand, if we put it live or amend it, then we know that every other provider will follow the same rules and follow the same standards. So even if, let's say, for example, a Gmail will join and, and, and Microsoft will join, that's fine for us. But if they make amendments, please do it all together. That will completely destroy the complete standard. If every post box is sticking to their own standard, then we can kill it and that will be the death of all this BIMI project. I hope and I can just, uh, I can just uh, hope that somebody of all the ESPs now listening here uh, talk to each other and just make amendments all together. Then it's no problem for us to amend something. If there's a new guideline or something like this, all fine. But please do not kill this standard by uh, making 20 different uh, needed uh, configuration for for 10 brands or something like this. So I can just uh, I can just hope it will be that way. Okay. And the last one is: What has been the general feedback of implementing BME from the new Use it with marketing team. Yeah, what was the feedback from the marketing team? <laughs> a very good feedback. <laughs> we solved a lot of problems and we made everything better. So um, why should they not um, be? Um, yes. Yeah, and you get also some feedback from the commercial side. Well, they say, hey, it's a free brand impression. And you don't have to pay for this brand impression. It's there. It's you just have to do your homework, and then the brand impression is there. And if you go to the general marketing guys and say, "Hey, do you want a free brand impression?" You will never get a no. That's it. They are just happy that you get it. And I think, but I think already think that the biggest fan of our whole this stuff is our our, our internet security officer and the domain team because uh, they know now what's going on. They now have. Uh, have a full control about what's what's happening and and like Romina mentioned before, the number of cyber attacks and the number of abuse of abusement with our uh, domain has reduced dramatically, and that is a, a, a really also great good feedback that our brand is not abused. So the the feedback was just great. It was better that that than the time when we wanted to start, but now that everyone sees that it's working, we just uh, just get positive feedback. Okay, cool. Um, we have two or three questions more. Um, I will discuss them with Romina and Peter afterwards and we'll send you, the attendees, the answers. Um, first of all, many thanks to Romina and, Pe and Peter for today's webinar. We are very happy that you also were a virtual part of the CSA email summit and we're very happy about that. And um, the attendees, as you can see, um, our CSA Digital Email Summit is slowly coming to an end this year. We just are for the last one, of course, with Peter again. It's on Thursday. Um, before we start another series in 2021, um, and after this webinar today, you will see you will receive a feedback form. We will be very happy if you fill it out and give us feedback about the session today or the last one. And I wish you a nice evening now. And thank you again, Romina and Peter. Um, and dear attendees, 
I hope we meet you again um, at the next webinar, webinar on Thursday. Bye. Bye. All the things from our side and just start now. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good end. Thank you. Bye. Bye.